It was FA Cup semi-final weekend and it did not disappoint. So let's start with Saturday's game, Man City 2, Liverpool 3. Very exciting game and Liverpool really showed their intent and it seemed like they were out for revenge and they certainly took it. Man City made a lot of changes to their match, to the last match against Atletico Madrid. They had Stefan in goal, Sinchenko and Ake at the back and also Fernandinho in midfield and it did show to an extent because Liverpool... They didn't make as many changes and they were the dominant team in the match, but especially in the first half. It was an excellent corner from Liverpool. Conte rose the highest, smashed it into the back of the net. 1-0, fantastic header from him. And Liverpool continued to press high at the pitch. They had that high defensive line and it certainly paid off. Stefan, terrible mistake from him. It's funny how in the Man City-Liverpool league game where it finished 2 all just a week or so ago... Edison was so cool and just passed it to his defender just on the line and Diogo Jota almost slid in and tackled him. Stefan tried to do the same but could not rep replicate that. Mane came sliding in and made it 2-0. Fantastic pressing from him and the whole Liverpool team. And like I said, Liverpool's courage to have a high defensive line meant that they could press high up the pitch and put Man City under pressure. And Man City couldn't deal with it in the first half. So Mane made it 2-0 and then the third goal was a fantastic move. Trent with an amazing pass up to Diaz and then Diaz again like he's shown since he signed amazing ability to bring the ball down and dribble around the opposition. Eventually the ball made its way to Mane. A fantastic finish from him. Maybe Stefan could have done better, but I think that's a little bit harsh because the ball was spinning away from Stefan and it was just in the corner. And Mane, it showed that he's just got real fire in his belly because since Diaz has come in, it seemed to me anyway, like Mane's really stepped up his game and he scored twice on Saturday and was excellent. Fantastic finish from him to make a 3-0. Liverpool thoroughly deserved to be leading at half time. And in the first half, Liverpool had three shots on target and Man City had none. Liverpool had more passes, more duels won and more aerial duels won. And like I said, Mane was brilliant, particularly for me. He stood out for Liverpool, but the whole Liverpool team were fantastic. And Man City didn't know how to deal with them. And it would have been really easy for Man City to just collapse or feel sorry for themselves and just succumb to a 3-0 defeat. But they came out in the second half and they showed real attacking intent and it was excellent for them to get an early goal in the second half. Great move from Man City, finished off by Grealish, good finish from him. And to be fair, Man City created more chances in the second half. Now, that's probably in part because of the game state, given that Liverpool didn't need to push up the pitch because they already had scored three times. And obviously, when Grealish scored, Liverpool still had a two-goal lead. So there still wasn't too much of intent for them to push forward. So Man City were always going to have more possession and have more passes and arguably had more possession in the final third. But they did. And Man City, they came on strong. They had a chance with Jesus and a late chance with Fernandinho. But still, they didn't cause too much of a threat to Liverpool. And Alisson made some really good saves to make sure that the scoreline just stayed at 3-1 for most of the second half. Salah, he had a chance to make it 4-1 to wrap up the game. He missed it, though. He's not been quite as good in the last few weeks. But to be fair, I mean, it's so hard to criticise Salah. He's had a phenomenal season yet again. And other players have stepped up for Liverpool. Because like I said, Liverpool have five world-class attackers. So Salah could be off for one game or a few games. And then you have Mane, who only needs two chances and takes them both. So even though Salah's been off a form, I'm sure, no doubt, he'll come back strong soon. And people might think it may be down to his contract dispute, but I personally don't think so. I think Salah is more than motivated to still put in 100% effort and desire for Liverpool. I mean, he's been at Liverpool for, what, over three years now? Over, almost four years? And he's won the golden boot with them, won the league, obviously, Champions League. I mean, he's just not going to down tools now because they're sorting out a contract for him. I think he'll come back strong. And like I said, if he's not performing or any of the other attacking players for Liverpool, Liverpool have got so many different players that can change a game. And like I said, with Mane, he was the guy that stepped up and really performed for them. But Man City, they, they did improve 
from no shots on target in the first half to six on shots on target in the second half. And they eventually got their second goal. Mares only coming on late on in the 83rd minute, but he got behind the Liverpool defence, played it across goal, and Bernardo Silva was there to tap it in. But it was too little too late for Man City. Although, Sterling, he almost scored. He had a good shot, good save from Alisson. But in the end, for me, Liverpool thoroughly deserved to win. And I think Man City had to rotate in a way because... On Wednesday, they had a really difficult game away to Atletico Madrid. And that same team just simply couldn't have played so soon after that game to play on Saturday. And you had De Bruyne, who had a slight injury. He couldn't have been risked. And I think Stefan rightly started, given Pep's loyalty to the backup goalkeeper in the FA Cup and other cup competitions. So I think it was the right choice for Man City to do a little bit of rotation. Maybe in hindsight, they could have done less rotation. But, I mean, Man City are going for the Champions League and Premier League. So, while the FA Cup is still a phenomenal cup competition to win, Man City have got other priorities. So, I can definitely see though why, why they made rotations. And given that they made so many changes, they weren't too, too bad. And more importantly, it was a good reaction from them in the second half to improve and score twice. But for Liverpool... They now play Chelsea in the final after on Sunday, Chelsea beat Crystal Palace by two goals to nil. Not a very good first half, if I'm being honest. Palace matched Chelsea playing five-back defence. Kuyate actually played right centre-back in this game with Eze, MacArthur and Schlupp playing in midfield with Mateta and Zaha up front. And it seemed to work. Chelsea didn't create too many chances and Palace actually had the best chance in the first half and it was Kuyate, a left-footed shot, just outside of the box, a good save from Mendy. And that was the only really chance, big chance of the first half. But in the second half, I talked about a good reaction from Man City to come back in the second half. And it was the same with Chelsea. Chelsea reacted really well. And it was, as the game was going on, it was inevitable that Chelsea were going to get that goal. And they did. MacArthur lose the ball, lost the ball, who, don't get me wrong, I think he's had a really good, decent Premier League career for Palace and he's important for them. But... I don't think he did well today and he lost the ball. Chelsea then won the ball back, obviously. If MacArthur lost the ball, Chelsea won the ball back and then eventually fell its way to Loftus-Cheek, who was a first-half substitute for Kovacic and it was a fantastic strike from him. It took a little bit of a deflection, but it was a good goal from Loftus-Cheek and Palace needed to react to that. They needed to make changes and Elise and Benteke came on and as soon as they came on, they upped the tempo to Palace and... They looked like they were going to create a good amount of chances and actually get back into the game. But Chelsea just scored at the perfect moment. Just when Palace were building a little bit of momentum, Chelsea just killed the game right there. Great move from Werner and Mount on the left-hand side. Eventually found its way to Mount, who had enough time in the box to just finish it in the bottom corner. And that was pretty much it. Massive blow to Palace. And to be fair, Palace did react well. Joachim Anderson from a corner, oh, just wide. A few minutes after Chelsea scored, he had a big, big, big chance to put it in the net from a corner. And if he scores that, Palace are right back in the game and who knows what will happen. But in the end, he didn't put it in and Palace didn't create too much after that. And in the end, Chelsea definitely deserved to win. And this is going to be their third consecutive FA Cup final. Of course, in 2020, they lost against Arsenal. And last year, they lost against Leicester. So is it third time lucky for them? Who knows? But it's obviously going to be a repeat of the League Cup final where Liverpool won on penalties. So I can't wait to watch that FA Cup final. Should be really interesting to watch. But some really good games, to be fair. I think both games were very entertaining, other than perhaps the first half, Palace against Chelsea, which wasn't the best. But overall, really good, high-quality games and really entertaining. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review of that. I really appreciate you watching Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.